the world view is communicated through narrative, through story. And we call this narrative that communicates the worldview meta-narrative. 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 Meta means great. It's the great narrative. So here's the worldview within the culture, which forms the culture's understanding of the answer to those three questions, those three ultimate questions, as well as the understanding of uh, the uh, important questions that are not, that are not uh, ultimate questions, but very important questions like the meaning of power and so forth. All of those sorts of understandings, like the meaning of power or like how to find forgiveness, all of those understandings are communicated through meta-narrative. It's meta-narrative that forms the answer to those questions. Meta meaning great, as I said, and narrative story. When we say meta-narrative, it doesn't mean necessarily that it is a long narrative. It might be only a sentence long but it is the narrative that forms the worldview of a culture. Are you understanding? Let me illustrate. A couple years ago, I was invited to China to give two lectures in a large Chinese university. There were several others invited also, not just me. There were six of us all together, invited to give lectures at a large Chinese university. This was the theme that we were to talk about. How to work constructively at peacemaking between civilizations. Peacemaking between civilizations. That's what we were to talk about. And I was to have two lectures about that. So, so what I did was to say, oh, and they reminded, they reminded all of us that um, this is an atheistic university and that they do not, they're not impressed with religion. They embrace atheistic ideologies and not uh, religious systems. So remember that. And so I said to them, I'm going to share with you several meta-narratives that form the approach of cultures to this question, peacemaking among civilizations. And that question is particularly formed by the question as to who I am. What is the meaning of life? That's, that's, that's the question that, um, that, that we will look at by looking at these, at these narratives. I said, let me just look at several narratives. Uh, first of all, let's, um, let's look at, at the Hindu narrative as communicated in the Bhagavad Gita. And we'll talk more about this later on. But in the Bhagavad Gita, um, the question is, why am I here? What am I here for? And the answer in the Bhagavad Gita was, you are here to obey the law of your caste. And when the law of your caste tells you that what you should do is fight, then it is right to fight. And if you kill somebody in fighting, it doesn't really matter because we are here as a tragic accident. We're here as a tragic accident. So if that is your, merit, if that is your narrative, how will it affect your approach to peacemaking between civilizations? That was my question. And they got in small groups then and they discussed that question. Another narrative. I said, let's look at the narrative um, which comes to us through Charles Darwin, 
the theory of evolution. In that theory, the conviction is that we come from uh, clay in the bottom of the ocean, which, in which the chemicals interacted in amazing ways that brought about the formation of living cells that then evolved and developed until it became human beings, and which means that we are only biology, that we are not more than biology, we're only intelligent monkeys who came from the goo in the, in the uh, ocean floor and evolved gradually, gradually to become sophisticated beings that human beings are. But we are in continuity with, with, uh, with uh, the animal world. There's nothing special about being human. We're only biology. That's the Charles Darwin narrative. So if you believe that narrative, how will it affect your approach to peacemaking among nations? How will it affect you? Um, what will it say about, say, genocide? Um, what would it say about um, uh, how to deal with widows in India and so forth, if that's what you believe, that we're only animals, nothing more than animals? Like my anthropology teacher used to tell me at New York University when I was working on my doctor's degree. She would say to us students studying for our doctors, remember this, you're only animals, nothing more than animals. The theory of evolution has proved that that is true. So if that is your narrative, how will it affect, how will it affect your approach to worldwide peacemaking? That was the question I brought into my lecture. Or, I said, here's another one. Among the Kikuyu of Kenya, where I grew up, in, Tanz in Tanzania, Kenya. Among the Kikuyu, they said that the first human beings uh, the first Kikuyu human beings were Mumbi and Bumbi. Mumbi and Bumbi, the first uh, Kikuyu human beings, and they came from the fig tree. They came from the fig tree. So, if you believe that, <laughs> how will it affect your approach to peacemaking among nations? that Mumbi and Bumbi are the first Kikuyu couple that came from a fig tree. And when I taught at the University of Nairobi, I would occasionally ask my students, well, if you, Kikuyu, came from the fig tree, where did I come from? I'm Swiss German. I'm not Kikuyu. And what do you think they would say? They would say, we do not know where you came from. We do not know. <laughs> Go and ask your ancestors. <laughs> Maybe you came from a pig. Who knows where you came from? <laughs> that each tribe had its own divine origin, and the divine origin was always something having to do with nature. You know. Or I said, here's another meta narrative. Uh, it comes from the first chapter of the Bible. God created Adam and Eve in His own image. God created Adam and Eve in his own image. What if you believe that? How will it affect your approach to inter-civilizational peacemaking and working together among nations and peoples of different cultures and different tribes? And so there are four different narratives, you know, that I presented in my lecture there in that Chinese university. Each of them a meta-narrative, each of them different. How would each of these narratives affect your approach to peacemaking, was the question that we posed that day in that Chinese university, you see. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. Now let's take the Kikuyu meta narrative that says that you came that the Kikuyu people came from the Mugumu tree, but they don't know where a Swiss German came from. You see, that kind of narrative feeds what we call tribalism, doesn't it? Because the Kikuyu come from a particular god who is a fig tree. But where do the Luo come from? Well, the Luo came from a cave in the ground. That's a different tribe, you see. And so each tribe 
has its own different divine source of origin. But where is the narrative that communicates that we are all one humanity? It's not there. If you say this group came from a fig tree and this group came from a cave in the ground, it means each tribe, each nation, each culture has a different divine origin. Whereas in the biblical meta-narrative, all humanity are created in God's image. <laughs> so we are all one humanity, all created in God's image. That makes a huge difference when you think of inter-civilizational peacemaking. This is, it's that narrative, it's that meta-narrative that very much forms the world court who oftentimes make these kinds of pronouncements. So-and-so was guilty of crimes against humanity. Therefore, so-and-so must be brought to judgment. Where do they get that notion that there is one humanity, you see? That we're not all different humanities. The origin of that kind of conviction begins right here with Genesis chapter 1. God created Adam and Eve in his own image and they are the parents of all humankind. So all of us are one humanity created in God's image. Or what if you embrace the Darwinian meta-narrative, which says that all we are is, uh, is monkeys? Well, world leaders sometimes orchestrate their history and so forth in ways in which there is horrendous genocides. Take, for example, the Nazi situation, which brought so much suffering to so many of our ancestors uh, in this region and other regions of the world, the whole Nazi meta-narrative, you see, which was built upon the notion that we are only biology. And so if 100 million people died in that horrendous cataclysm, it doesn't really matter because they're just monkeys anyway, you see, if that's the meta-narrative that you embrace. But then along comes this biblical meta-narrative that says, oh, hold it, hold it, no, oh no. We're not just biology. We're created in God's very image. And when I would teach that in my theology classes at Lithuania Christian College, my students, like I said the other day, would uh, write in their journals, I hope that's true. Because in my biology classes in high school, I learned I'm only a monkey. And I would look in the mirror and I would say, really? I hope that I'm more than a monkey. And I'm learning that God, the architect of the universe, has revealed that, no, I'm not just a monkey. I'm created in God's very own image. And what a difference that makes in our approach to one another and in our uh, sense of a profound, uh, a profound way that we need to respect each other as beings created in God's image, not just biology, you see. So these narratives, meta-narratives, can be very short, but they are tremendously influential in forming our worldviews. And in that formation of these worldviews, it really does make a difference. It really does make a difference. What the meta-narrative is that we embrace. It's not just a trivial sort of thing that has no ultimate significance. It's very important, the meta-narratives that we embrace. And as we work at these different meta-narratives of different religions, let's continually look at the significance of these narratives as they form cultures and civilizations and form our understanding of ourselves and of one another.